Amen. All right, in uh, Acts chapter 11 here, there's just a, a real, just two verses I want to focus on from this chapter. Look at verse number 22 where we just read there in Acts 11. The Bible says, Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Now I want to, uh, this sermon, I, I really wanted to try to speak to your hearts this morning. Because what we're going to be doing, what I'm going to be preaching on is a, is a matter of your heart. And I would like to be able to hopefully preach a sermon, maybe something similar to what Barnabas was preaching when Barnabas went unto these people. Because it says here that when Barnabas came, he came to this group of people, he saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he exhorted them all. And an exhortation is something where you're, you know, you're, you're trying to build people up. You're exhorting them to do good. You, know, you want to encourage people. And hopefully this sermon this morning will be an encouragement to you and an exhortation. And what was he exhorting them to do? It says that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time, a lot, quite a bit of time actually on that word cleave. Because first of all, it all has to start with your heart. And notice he says, I, you need to purpose, with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. So you need to, to decide for yourself, it's a decision that you're going to make, what you're gonna, how you're going to direct your heart. What, what are you going to set your heart on? It's a conscious decision to purpose your heart. It doesn't happen by accident. To set your heart to follow the Lord, to set your heart to do what's right, to set your heart on those things, you have to decide that that's something that you want to do. It's not, again, it's not something that's going to happen by chance. You have to make that decision. And the decision ought to be the purpose your heart to cleave unto the Lord. I love that word cleave. The, the King James Bible uses such great language. It's, it's the height of the English language. In, in the words that are used here, you know, this is the type of language that like Shakespeare used and, and it's, it, it's so much better than, than, our, than the common language even today. Not that, these, not that we don't know what these words mean, but it's just not used as often. And, um, it, but these words are just, are just really, um, really express a lot. That word cleaving to the Lord, think about what that means. Well, if you recall in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24, the Bible says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So in that instance, we're talking about cleaving. It's about leaving your family, you know, departing from your mother and your father and cleaving unto your wife. I mean, think about that relationship. You cleave unto your wife. You two become one flesh. You are one person. You, you, you join yourself to them and cleave. I think of like cleaving, like clinging, like, like you're going to, you, you stay together. You, you're so close. You're like one flesh. That's when you cleave to them. And we need to purpose our hearts to cleave unto the Lord, to not want to be like, well, God, you know, I kind of like the Bible. I kind of like what you have to say, but I, but I also want to do this other stuff. No, we need to purpose our hearts that we're going to cleave unto him, that we're going to love God. We're going to stick close to him and we're going to just, you know, get our hearts right and say, whatever it is you want me to do, God, I want to cleave to you. I want to do what's right so much. I'm just going to stick with you, right? And that's, that's basically what he's exhorting the people to do. And that's what I want to exhort you to do this morning. Cleave unto the Lord. It's a crucial decision to make. And this is like probably the biggest decision that you need to make after you get saved. The biggest decision of your life is just, is just putting your faith in Christ to save your soul from hell. That is the number one thing that needs to be done. That is the most important thing that needs to be done in our lives. But after that deciding that, okay, now that I'm saved, now that Jesus has saved my soul, what am I going to do with my life? What, what am I going to set my heart on? What am I going to spend my time doing? You need to cleave unto the Lord. And in order to do that, in order to get close to God, because a lot of times, and this is popular preaching today for people to say, well, I, have a, you know, I don't have a religion, I have a relationship, and they want to get close to God. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand what that even means. Getting close to God. It's not just some feeling that you have inside of your heart. I'm not saying getting close to God isn't going to give you a good feeling, right? But it's, that's not all it is. 
And that's not, you know, getting close to God isn't defined by just how do you feel inside of you. I mean, we, we as human beings, we have experienced emotions and feelings for all kinds of different reasons. Hey, there's a lot of people that get good feelings in their hearts and they're doing completely the wrong thing. You can't just base everything or especially how close you are with God based on a feeling that happens inside of you. Okay, we need to determine how close we are to God based on what the Bible says. And in order to get close to God, in order to draw nigh unto him, we need to be essentially we just need to obey him and do what he's told us to do. And it only makes sense. Think about a relationship again. God is our father. If you're born again, God is your father. If I want to have, if my daughters want to have a good relationship with me, they're going to listen to what I tell them to do. And they're going to, they're going to obey me. And, and, and obviously there's, there's more than just obedience. There's love. They're going to do things for me. You know, whatever, all those things are going to help our relationship. I mean, it's the same thing even with my wife. I mean, if we want to have a good relationship, we're going to love each other, listen to each other, respect. And, and, you know, there's a lot going on there to have a good relationship. Well, it's the same thing with God, right? If you want to have a good relationship with God, if you want to get close to God, well, we need to listen, for one, and respect what he's told us and what he has for us to do. We have to listen to him, not just, just blow it off, not just think that, well, I know better than, than, than my dad. I know better than God. And not only that, you know, listen and obey him. But then do things for him, right? If that's, that's how you're going to draw close to God. That's how you're going to have that great relationship with God. Now, you can hear all the sermons in the world that, that rail on sin, that, that um, you know, showing you what the Bible says that we need to do with our lives. But if you don't have it in your heart that you're truly going to just love God and do what he has you to do, None of those sermons are going to mean anything. I mean, you can, hear, you can hear God's word all day long. You can hear it being preached. You can hear it being preached. And, and you can be in the best church in the world with the most spirit-filled person. You can be listening to the Apostle Paul. You can be listening to the Apostle Peter. And it's not going to do you any good if you haven't made the decision in your heart that, you know what, I want to know what God has for me to do because I want to please Him and I want to serve Him and I want to do what's right. You have to have that decision made in advance in your heart in order for God's word to have any positive impact in your life and to do that which is right, it's, everything else is going to be meaningless. It's meaningless to, to sit in church and to hear all this great truth if your heart is not right with God. If you, do not, if you have a stubborn or rebellious heart that just says, well, you know what, I know that's what the Bible says, but I'm going to do it anyways, that comes from a heart that doesn't care. That just says that, you know what, you don't really want to get that close to God. That's what that tells me. That's what that, 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 what that should tell you. If you, could, if you could sit here and listen and say, you know what, this is what the Bible says and I don't care. The, number, the amount of preaching here isn't going to matter. You, it has to start with you. It has to start with your individual heart. Do you really want to get close to God? Do you really want to have that close relationship with Him? Do you want to follow Him? And, and that's something we need to purpose our hearts to do and say, yes, that is something I want to do. That's the first step. Everything else is going to follow. If you have that type of an attitude, if you have that type of a desire, if you have that type of a willingness to, to want to do right, to want to please God, hey, you may stumble and fall along the way. You might have some problems with sin, but you'll be headed the right direction as long as you have that willingness and get that settled in your heart and, 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 and completely stay away from and avoid the rebellion and the stiff neck that doesn't want to hear God's word. That doesn't want to have anything to do with it. It's similar to, um, you know, I, I used to smoke cigarettes. And, and I remember there's a difference between knowing, because I mean, everyone that smokes cigarettes today, I mean, I don't care who you are, they know it's not good for you, right? It, it, it's pretty common knowledge today that smoking cigarettes is not good for your health. And people that smoke, they know that. I knew that. I wasn't, I wasn't ignorant of the fact that smoking wasn't good for me. But you know what? I wanted to do it. And even though I knew I should quit, and if someone asked you, you should quit, I'd be like, yeah, I should quit. 
You know that. But it's not until you actually want to that you're going to do it. Amen. Right? It's, it's, it's something that I had to choose. You know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to stop doing this. And that's when it happens. That's when, and, and you know what? Maybe you struggle with it. Maybe it is a hard time. Maybe, maybe you slip and you fall. But you know what? You're headed the right way. And, and, you're, and, you're, and you're making the attempts to clean up your life. And as long as you keep that desire, hey, you could achieve that. And it's the same thing with serving God. You know, you need to want to do it. You need to want to, to live more righteously. You need to want to get the sin out of your life. You need to want to obey God more. You might stumble and fall along the way, but head that, that direction. God will help you. God will see that. God will see your heart and say, you know what? This is someone that really is trying. This is someone who really wants to follow me and obey me and is trying to get closer to me. The Bible says, draw nigh unto, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you. So if you're trying to get closer to God, hey, it's not just going to be like God's over there and you have to go this whole way to him. He says, if you draw nigh to me, draw nigh means getting close. If you get closer to me, I'll come closer to you. So he'll come and he'll start meeting you halfway. You start making those steps. You start putting, you know, moving forward and, and purposing your heart and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cleave to my God. Now, he's way over there and I'm way over here because of all my sinful life and everything I'm doing, but I'm going to start getting closer to him. Guess what? It's gonna, he's going to make it easier because he's going to start getting closer to you. But it has to start in your heart. Turn, if you would, to Deuteronomy chapter number four. It's the fifth book of the Bible in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter number 4. Now we're going to be looking at a bunch of verses that, that talk about cleaving to, the, to God, cleaving to the Lord, you know, getting, getting close to Him. And I really want to draw your attention to the fact of how much this has to do, excuse me, how much this has to do with obedience and obeying His law. That, that in order to cleave unto God, in order to get close unto Him, obedience is critical. And um, look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Look at verse number 1. We're going we're gonna to read quite a bit of this chapter. Verse number 1 starts reading, Now therefore hearken, that means listen, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Saying, listen to the statutes, listen to the judgments. Those are the commandments. The statutes, statutes are laws. Where he's saying, listen to the laws, listen to the judgments, so you can live. I mean, it's, it's, it's a positive, right? You need to hear this stuff because it's going to help you to live. Verse 2, you shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. He's saying, look, don't add unto God's law. A lot of people are doing that today. They, they come up with things that, that, that are laws and, they, and they'll attribute that to being God's laws that they're not. And he's also saying don't take away from that. Don't, don't look at God's law and say, well, that really isn't part of his law when it is, when it's sitting right there in your face. He's saying don't do that. And um, God's very strict about messing with his word. When, when, you take away, when you decide to take away from God's word, you are, you are basically making God a liar because... If this is what God says and you remove from that, you're taking away from things that he said and, uh, or adding to it. And that changes and twists and, and turns the truth of God into a lie when you start messing and tampering with it and adding and removing from it. Um, no, we need to take it for what it is. He said it. He's preserved it for us. We have the whole truth. We don't need to, to start butchering it up and, and adding and removing from it. Look at verse number three. He says, Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Now Baal Peor, just you know, is, a, is a, basically is a false god. It's just worshiping a false idol, a false god. Anytime you see that word Baal, B-A-A-L, in the Bible, it's, it's all just like other names for false gods. And, and there's variations of that. You think of like or, uh, Beelzebub, Baal, um, Baalim. These are all Baal Peor. They're all just variations of the devil, of a false god, of, you know, of, of someone who's not the real god. So he's saying, look, all these people that, that, that worshipped and followed Baal Peor, God destroyed them. But you that cleaved unto the Lord, you that, that, that 
that really stuck with God, you're alive, every one of you this day. He says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. You notice when we started off reading, he's talking about the statutes and judgments. And right after he's talking about cleaving unto the Lord, again, he brings up the statutes and the judgments. He says, Keep therefore, in verse 6, and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. He's saying, look, if you keep God's law, that is wisdom and understanding just in the keeping of his law. And when people see that and they see that you're a nation that follows God's law, they'll be like, hey, these guys got it together. Because your nation will be overall, if you are obeying God's law, you're going to be prosperous. You're not going to have all this, you know, huge crime rates and, and, and living in a place where nobody wants to live. You're going to be someone, hey, these people, they must be wise. They must know what's going on because, because of the way that they're living. And it's a result of their obedience to God's law and following and just, just following the instructions that God has given to them because he does it for our benefit. He does it so that we can have joyful existence on this earth. Verse number seven says, For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Again, verses seven and eight there, he says, What nation is so great that has God so close to them, so nigh unto them? And then he says, that it repeats the same exact thing, except replaces God being close to them with having statutes and judgments that are righteous as the law that God gave them. Getting close to God is, is completely tied in with following and obeying his statutes and his judgments and his commandments. Verse number nine says, Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest thy, they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. This is important. These laws are important. You need to keep them diligently. You need to make sure that you're going over it again and again and again, and that, that they're in your heart, and that you don't forget them, and you don't just keep it to yourself. You teach it to your sons and to your sons' sons. You teach it to the next generations going forward. Hey, this law is important. Important. This is the way of life. You need to know this stuff and, and treat it as such and be diligent about it. Don't be slack. Don't be lazy about it. Don't be lazy in your Bible reading. Make sure you're reading and in this book daily and that you're keeping diligent to it because in, this is the, these are the words of life. These laws are going to bring you close to God. These statutes, this is wisdom. This is going to help you get close to God. You're in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Flip, if you would, just to chapter number 10, a few, few pages to the right. chapter 10. Look at verse number 16. Verse number 16 of chapter 10 says, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. And see, that, that is one of the biggest problems with drawing nigh to God is, is having a rebellious or a stiff neck. He's saying, look, you need to cut, circumcise, you need to cut the foreskin of your heart. You need to open up your heart to God. You need, you need to make sure that whatever hardness that you have in your heart that, that, that is resisting God and resisting His Word and resisting the things that, that He has for you to do. You need to cut that open and don't be so stiff-necked. Submit yourself to His authority. Submit yourself unto God and just say, okay, I'm done fighting with you, God. I'm not going to be a rebellious child. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to listen to what you have me to do and, and, uh, and I'm going to obey you. Jump down to verse number 20. It says, Thou shalt... Fear the Lord thy God. Him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Now, he's saying, first of all, you need to fear God and serve him. Right? We're, we're God's servants. He's our, he's our master. He's our Lord. We need to do the things that he has to do. And we need to have the proper fear and respect of God. 
and of his word and what he's told us to do and cleave unto him. It says he is thy praise. So he's, you know, we should be thankful and happy because it's not just that God is a tyrant, right? People look at these words and, and they don't like it because it says, oh, I need to fear God and serve him. And they think, but God's loving. Why should I have to do that? Yes, God is loving. And that's actually all the more reason why we should want to serve him because of his grace, because of his mercy. That's why it says he is thy praise and he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. He's done all these things for you. He's done these great wonders. He's done these great miracles. He's helped you out so much. Hey, if you're saved today, he's given you eternal life. You ought to want to serve him. You ought to want to please him and do what's right. He gave you something that you can never get on your own. He gave you free, eternal life, and he paid for it. He paid a heavy price for you to be saved. Is it really that much to ask that you, that you just want to serve him and do what he's, he, he has for you to do when he showed you such great kindness and mercy and love? God is completely worthy of our obedience and of our praise and to be joyful. He is completely worthy of that. It shouldn't be hard to want to cleave to God and to want to serve him and to want to please him when you consider how merciful and long-suffering he is towards us. And it truly is a stiff neck when a person can take a look at themselves and understand you know, what the Bible says about their sins. And if you're saved, you should know this. You should know that your sins are, are bad enough for you to go to hell. And it really is someone who has a stiff neck to, to be able to know about how, how bad your sins are and how loving God is to provide forgiveness to wipe away those sins for all of your wickedness and then to turn and to not want to do what he has commanded us to do. Having all of that knowledge, having knowing of what you've done and knowing that he's forgiven it. He's wiped it away. And to still say, I don't want to serve God. I don't want to do that. That's a stiff neck. That's rebellion. That, that's, that's, that's not a good attitude to have. I'll tell you what, that is not cleaving unto the Lord at all. And, and that is just going to, that is going to be something in your life that's, going, that's just going to, cause more and more bad things to happen. When you have that type of, of stiff neck, I mean, think about, you could think, I think about my own children. Again, if they have a rebellious heart and they don't want to listen to me, they don't want to obey, they are not going to have a very good existence in this household. It's not going to be, you know, good, okay, good, yeah, they're going to be fed, they're going to be loved, they're going to be, you know, cared for, but it's not going to be very pleasant for them, let's put it that way. They are not going to be having an enjoyable experience at home if they just are rebellious every day and they don't want to serve me, they don't want to do what, 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 I've, what, I've, what I tell them to do. Now, does that mean I'm some tyrant? No, of course not. I'm not just, I mean, anyone who knows me and knows our family, I don't, you know, we're no, we don't just, just, they're not our slaves, right? But they are here. We, we are the parents. We are in authority. And I'm going to give them rules because I love them. And I want them to, to turn out right and not turn into monsters who just, who just think about themselves and, and go about you know, doing whatever they want, not caring about anyone or anything else but themselves. And that is, that, is, that is why we have the rules for them. It's for their own benefit. But they are not going to be having very much joy and, and, and everything else if they decide to just disobey and just be stiff-necked and not appreciate what we do for him and not appreciate the love and, and the mercy and everything else that we show him. God's the same way. Okay, You are not going to have a very joyful existence on this earth if you have that stiff neck. If you say, I don't want to do, God, what you want me to do. I don't want to listen to it. And, and I, I know you've given me eternal life. I know you've done all this stuff for me. But I just want to keep sinning. I just want to keep drinking. I just want to keep doing whatever. I just want to keep doing that because I like it. And I just want to do it. That's not going to be good for anybody. That type of idea. You, you think, you know, we, we like to cling to our sins. Because... You're, you have an addiction or whatever. You, you like to clean them. You think that, that, that it's something you really want to do and ultimately it's just hurting you. 
Ultimately, it's just destroying you. You need to get the proper perspective on that sin. You might think, well, no, but I feel good. No, I need to do this. This is what, you know. No, you don't. And actually, if it's a sin, it's not good for you at all. And, and Satan has just deceived you into thinking that, that it's something enjoyable or something good. When if you get it out of your life, you will realize how much that really w does have a bad influence on your life. Um, what, whatever the sin may be, I'm being kind of generic with sin, but, but whatever it is, if it's a sin, it's against God's commandments, it's against his rules. God made the rules for a reason. And it's not just to, to make sure that you have no fun in this life. <laughs> It's for your benefit. It's, it's so that you can, you can grow and, and really have true joy in your life. You start getting rid of the chemicals and, and other you know, things that are, that are ungodly that, that give you joy. When you start getting rid of that, you start getting true joy in your life when you follow what, what He has prescribed for us to do. That's when you start getting an understanding. This is what true joy really is. It doesn't come from a bottle. It doesn't come from a pipe. It doesn't come from any of these other things. Those, the, the joy you get from that is nothing compared to the joy that God has prepared for you if you obey Him and if you do what He has set out for you to do. God knows what joy is. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to have an existence where you're full of joy. He really does. And he's, and he's told us how we can do that, but it's up to us to listen to him. It's up to us to cleave unto him. You're in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Flip over one more chapter, chapter number 11. I'm going to try to blow through this one a little bit more quickly. It's basically, you know, it's a lot, a lot of reiteration, a lot, a lot. And I just want you to, this, I'm going to all these verses because I want you to see the correlation between cleaving unto God and obeying His commandments. They, they go hand in hand. Look at verse number 18 of Deuteronomy chapter 11. The Bible reads, Therefore shall you lay up these, these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days may be f multiplied, and the days of your children, in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. You see... And then he says, look at verse number 22. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. We start off there in verse 18. He's talking about how important God's word is, how important it is to, to lay up my words, lay up God's word in your heart and in your soul. You need to keep it that close to you. God's word needs to be in your heart and in your soul. He's saying, bind them for a sign upon your hands. He's like, have my words right at your hands. Have my words as frontlets between your eyes. Have them in front of you all the time. Have it at your hands. Have it in front of your eyes. Teach your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, so he's talking about teaching your children when you're sitting and down in the house. Hey, when you're walking by the way, when you're out of your house, when you're out doing things, when you lie down, when it's time to go to bed, and when you rise up. He's basically saying all the time. All the time you need to be teaching your children this up. This is how critical God's word is. This is how important his commandments and his judgments are. That you need to keep it in your heart. You need to keep it in your soul. You need to teach your children all the time. You need to be teaching them from the moment you wake up to the moment you lay down to sleep. That's the, the importance that he's writing on. He's saying right upon the doors of your house and on your gates. Have it in front of you all over the place. That your days may be multiplied and the days of your children. And he's saying if you diligently, again, there's that word diligently. It's not, it's, it's not an accident. You need to be focused on keeping these commandments. If you diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them. And what are those commandments? He says to love the Lord your God. To love him. Walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. Loving God, walking in His ways, doing what He's told us to do, obeying His commandments, 
and cleave unto him. Stick close unto him. That's what we need to diligently keep his commandments. He says, then he's going to bless you. Essentially, that's what, I mean, here he's going to drive the nations out before you, you know, your enemies. He's going to conquer them all. He's going to fight for you. He's going to look out for you. He's going to bless you. That's the promise that you get by, by cleaving unto God, to loving him, keeping his ways. And that's where you're going to have true joy in your life. You have that victory. You have that victory in your life over, over all of your obstacles. It says in verse 25, There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Verse 26, Behold, I say before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. He's saying, you, the choice is yours. Do you want to receive a blessing or do you want to receive a curse? It's up to you. That's a decision you have to make. Do you want to cleave unto God? Do you want to obey Him? Do you want to love Him and, and just do what He has for you to do and be blessed and, and have God fight for you and have God you know, come close to you and you can be close to Him? Or do you want to be cursed? Do you want to say, you know what, I'm going to have a stiff neck and I want to just do all these other things. I don't want to listen to what you have me to do. I don't care what you say in the Bible and I want to receive that curse. It's a pretty easy choice if you ask me. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, but, but the, you know, the decision is up to you. And it's reiterated many times throughout the Bible. We've already seen a, a few places. We're not going to go to all of them. It's a common theme in the Bible, but it's a decision for us to make. And you know what? This decision, it's not even necessarily one that you're going to have to make one time in your life. Now, hopefully you only have to make this decision one time. Okay? Hopefully it is something you say, you know what? I'm going to cleave unto God. And from that moment forward, that is what you strive to do for the rest of your life. But not, that's not always the case with people. Sometimes people get distracted with the cares of this world and they end up getting away from God and they set their heart to start doing something else. We need to be diligent about this. Renew that decision. If you've already made that decision, if you've already said, hey, I want to do what's right, I want to follow God. Hey, renew that decision again today and say, you know what? I'm going to be more diligent about it. I want to obey God. I want to cleave unto Him. It's something we need to keep on doing. Um, it's not necessarily just a one time. You're in Deuteronomy uh, 11. Turn to chapter number 30. We're almost done here. We're going to be wrapping it up. Deuteronomy chapter number 30. We're going to see one more, one more verse here about cleaving unto God in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Uh, look at verse number 15. He says, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Again, the decision's yours. Verse 16, In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. We need to cleave unto God because he's your life. Cleave unto God as you would cleave unto life. That, that is how we need to approach him. And I mean, hey, God gives us that choice. That's your decision. It's your decision to make. He's like, I, I put it before you. There's life and there's death. The choice is yours. There's blessing, there's cursing. Do what you will. It's your will that's going to do it. And that's what I'm preaching to this morning is your will, your heart. What is your, where is your heart at? Is your heart purposed to do what God has commanded us to do? Is your heart purposed to serve Him? 
Is your heart purposed to do the things that he has for us to do? Um, I'll read this for you. Joshua 22, verse 5. Actually, turn to Joshua chapter 24. I'll read Joshua 22. This is the last place we're turning to. Joshua chapter 24. I'll read from you for Joshua 22. Of course, the book of Joshua is just right after the book of Deuteronomy, so you're really close there. Joshua 22, right after Deuteronomy. But Joshua, you're turning to Joshua 24. I'll read from you. Joshua 22, verse 5 says, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law. Again, we need to be diligent about it. Take diligent heed. Treat it seriously. It's something that you can't just brush aside. Take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Strong words. Serve God completely, wholly, with your heart, with your soul. Love him. Keep his commandments. The Bible says in 1 John, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They're not, they're not sorrowful. They're not, they're not hard on us. Um, but that is the love of God. We want to show God our love to him. We're going to keep his commandments. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That is how we love God. That is how we get close to him is by obeying him and keeping his commandments and doing what he's told us to do. You're in Joshua 24. Real famous passage. We're going to close with this. The choice is yours this morning. Joshua 24. Look at verse number 14 of Joshua 24. This is, this is Joshua speaking right at the end of the book of Joshua. He says, now therefore... Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. And that's what we're looking to do this morning is decide in your heart who you're going to serve. Are you going to serve yourself? Are you going to serve your flesh? Are you going to serve the God of money? Or are you going to serve the Lord, Jesus Christ? Are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve what, it, what He has for us to do? Hey, the choice is yours. It's not gonna, it doesn't matter to me what you choose. I mean, I, I care about you. I want you to choose the right thing. But that's the choice is up to you. God's given you that choice. Who are you going to Who are you gonna serve? Hey, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's keep reading there. Verse 16, it says, And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Hey, God saved us. He brought us out from sin. They're saying, look, God forbid that we should, we should serve anyone else, which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. Verse 18, And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. And therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. They're saying, look, okay, you're saying you want to serve God. But if you say that, if you're just going to give God lip service and then you're going to turn around and then you're going to just start serving other gods anyways and you're just saying that you're not going to truly do it, he says, you better be careful that making that decision to serve God because he's saying, if you forsake the Lord, then he's going to turn, he's going to do you hurt. He's going to come back and... and He's already done good to you, but he's going to come back and consume you. And that's the warning that he's given them. But then they respond in verse 21, says, And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve and his voice will we obey. Now that's what we all ought to have. We all ought to have that type of an attitude. Now, did they all do that? No. That's not what they ended up doing. Now I'm sure many of them did, but as a whole, they ended up going back and serving other gods. 
But the choice is yours individually to serve the Lord your God, to cleave unto Him, to, to get close unto Him. And, and there's, I mean, there's, there's no, He is worthy. There's no greater joy that you can have than, than, than being in God's will, letting Him direct your steps, obeying His commandments, and, um, and serving Him. But, but hopefully something that was said this morning has reached through to you and that you can decide in your heart, say, you know what? I truly do love God. I am very thankful for what He's done for me. I appreciate and love the fact that He is merciful, that even though I've screwed up so many times, He's extended mercy unto me. He's given me eternal life. I am very thankful for that. And because of that, I am going to choose now to love God and, and, to, and to just show Him how thankful I am. And I'm going to serve Him. And I, I may not be perfect, but I'm going to try with all of my heart to serve God because He deserves it. He deserves more than that. But I'm going to at least try to give Him that and, and I'm going to listen to His Word. I'm going to listen to the preaching. I'm going to read the Bible and I'm going to decide today that I want to cleave and get as close as I can to God. And that's going to come through just, just being diligent about keeping His Word in your heart, reading it, and, and obeying it. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You so much for the Bible. Lord, you truly are amazing and, and merciful and, and wonderful, dear Lord. Um, you've done so much for us, so much, that, that we probably don't even realize all the, all the ways in which you've worked in our life. I don't even think you get credit for all the great good that you've done in our lives, dear Lord. We don't, we don't even comprehend uh, all the times where you've, you've done us well. And we, we appreciate that you, you, you do it anyways. And we can't be thankful enough for the fact that you've given us a free gift of salvation, dear Lord. I pray that you would please stir our hearts this morning. Help us to put you first in our lives, dear Lord, that we would, no matter what, we are going to serve you and obey you and do what you have for us to do. We know that you love us. You've already proved it to us. So there's no reason for us not to, to listen to you and obey your commandments, dear Lord. Uh, and uh, I, I just pray that you would please help our church to grow. Help our entire church to have this attitude, to have, to have our hearts right, that we would be purposed, and that we would keep our hearts diligently to serve you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.